Hi everybody, welcome to our second Cooking with Emily class. I'm Nathaniel Jones, Director of Consumer Engagement for Harvest Market, and this is Emily. So, Hi, Emily. Uh, Emily, go ahead and tell us about yourself. So my name is Emily, I'm the Registered Dietitian here at Harvest Market. Um, I do lots of cooking um, demonstrations and public classes and private classes. And, yeah. and, the nook. and we're in the nook. Yes. This is basically your home away from home. Absolutely. Because you all have classes here. Um, how can people find more information about the classes that you normally do besides this live cooking show? Sure. So you can go on our website at goharvestmarket.com um, and you can take a look at our events page. And on that events page is a list of all of the classes that we have going on. Absolutely. All right. And what are we making tonight? Tonight we are making duck acorn squash with, with um, sausage and apple. And a great fall recipe. A beautiful a fall recipe. It's finally starting to turn a little bit colder today, a little bit warm, but it's starting to get a little bit colder, so acorn squash is a great thing to have. Yes, yeah, uh, absolutely. So, the good news, we're getting ready to have a giveaway with the Illini tickets. And so you can enter your chance to win these Illini tickets. We have a set of four tickets instead of two tickets. This is to the November 25th game, um, and you can win these just by leaving a comment during live broadcast. So, let Emily know how well she's doing, ask a question during the broadcast, just leave a comment and be in that Yeah. Um, so what do people need to know? They probably need to chop the vegetables ahead of time as they have already, right? Right. So you can get a head start chopping on some of your vegetables if you want to, specifically like your onion um, and your celery and your apple. You want those diced up um, all about the same size. I'll be doing that here, um, but if you want to get a head start, you can. Um, you should have your acorn squash um, par cooked um, as the recipe states. And so um, if you have this part cooked, it should look about like this. Um, you want to take a fork and you, it should be fork tender, okay? So you should be able to prick your fork with it. Um, if you haven't part cooked your acorn squash, um, you simply want to cut it in half, open it up, take a spoon and scoop out those seeds. Um, and you want to roast this guy at about 425 um, for maybe about 20 minutes. So if you get it in right now, um, and in the oven, it should be done by the time your filling is done, okay? So the first thing that we want to get started is our sausage um, because that's going to take the longest to cook. So I have my pan heating over um, about a medium-high heat. So go ahead and get your skillet started over medium-high heat. All right, so I have my sausage here. So I use a sweet Italian turkey sausage. Um, you can use any sausage you want or that you have. Um, and I like this one because it is turkey sausage, so it's a little bit leaner for you. Um, so what I do is, um, because these come in the casing, I'll just squeeze the sausage right out of the casing and right into our pan. So I'm gonna wear gloves for this. You can use your bare hands and give them a good wash after you're done, totally fine. So again, I'm just gonna kind of work from the middle and squeeze out my sausage right into the pan. So I'm probably, I'm going to use about three links because this whole package is one and a quarter pound and I just want about one pound of turkey sausage altogether because we have lots of veggies in our apple that's going to go in this too. So this sausage is um, pre-seasoned, okay? So I take that into consideration when I'm making my dish. So if it's pre-seasoned, that means that I can probably get away with using other less um, seasonings. Um, but if you have just plain, not seasoned, um, then you can go ahead and give it a sprinkle with some salt and pepper in here. So I have my spatula. I'm just going to get this moving around in my pan. And since I'm using the turkey sausage, it's going to be a little bit leaner. So that means it's not going to give off as much fat. So I'm going to use just a little bit of olive oil in here. You can also use cooking spray or canola oil just to give a little moisture to the bottom of my pan so it doesn't stick too much, okay? So just give that a nice toss. There are little cheesemonger step that says, hi, Em, you're amazing. Aw, thanks, Steph. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jackie says, love the turkey. Ooh, great. Oh, it smells so good already. Those who just joined, you can win tickets to the Lion Eye game. This is the November 25th game. You can win those tickets just by leaving a comment, leave a question, uh, a compliment, or a suggestion for next cooking class. Leave us a comment, you're entered to win. Okay guys, so 
while my sausage is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the first portion of the produce that's gonna be going into the pan. So I've got my onion, I've got my celery, and I've got my leek. So if you don't have a leek, not a big deal at all. It's just kind of an added bonus. And I wanted to show you how to use a leek in your kitchen. So it's pretty simple. So it looks like this. Leeks come in all different shapes and sizes. So you might have one bigger or smaller than this. So the edible portion is pretty much from very close to the bottom to about right up here. And what I like to do, these outer top leaves are pretty tough. So I'm just gonna give those a chop off. And then, because leeks are so layered like an onion, they are a part of the onion family. They're a bit more mild um, than an onion. So what happens is those, um, those layers kind of gather sand and dirt from when they grow. So what you want to do is you want to take your knife and run it straight down the middle to expose all of those layers, just like this. Okay, so then what you can do is you can take it to your sink and just open up those layers to give it a little rinse. Ta-da! And now your leek is rinsed and ready to go. So I'm just going to do this side. John says he can't wait to try this recipe. Ooh! Oh, it's a good one. It is such a good one. All right, I'm going to give my sausage a stir. Just keep an eye on it. Kind of give it a good toss around every now and then while you're getting your other veggies ready. Oh my gosh, it smells so good! I like to break this up into nice little chunks. That's why I like to use kind of a, um, something with a flat edge, so like a spatula or like a wooden spatula like this, so I can break it up as it's cooking, okay? Because we want it nice and, to, and small pieces, everything we want kind of about the same size. So when we stuff our acorn squash, um, everything is, is pretty uniform um, in the stuffing there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna give this a slice so see how I'm holding my knife and pinching here, okay, then holding so my finger is in on top, it's wrapped along the side, and I'm just doing a simple wrapping motion. So I'm keeping the tip of my knife down on the cutting board, and I'm simply rocking back and forth, just like this. Making sure that my other hand is in a claw so I don't chop off my fingers. All right, looking beautiful. Jackie says, I've never used a leaf, but I think I'll try when I make this. Yeah, it's really, it's, it looks more intimidating than it actually is. Um, and again, it's, it's in the onion family, so if you like that onion flavor, um, it's a really mild onion flavor, especially when you saute it, it kind of gets a little bit sweet, which is beautiful. Just adds another depth um, of flavor to the dish. All right, I'm just gonna break these pieces up here so we're looking really good. I just want to get this all cooked through. That's the great thing about this filling, you guys, is that everything is cooked. The filling is done. So you can actually pre-make that filling if you wanted to, keep it in the fridge, and then when you're ready to stuff your egg and squash, you can, okay? So I I like to keep, I don't like to have um, the tops. Sometimes they can be pretty tough. So again, this is a great thing to keep for when you're making your vegetable stock, just like the rest of your onion. So I'm gonna keep that off to the side. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my bowl because the first thing that we're gonna add to our pan is the leeks, the onion, and the celery, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get my celery ready. Just take off the bottom there. All right, I'm gonna keep this moving in my pan. Brown it nicely. Breaking up those big chunks. It's looking really good. Again, if you want to win the line of tickets, November 25th game, all you got to do is leave a comment. So that's a question, a compliment, or a suggestion for the next class. Uh, leave a, a, a comment, and you're here to win. You got one set of four tickets, another set of two tickets you can win. Leave a comment. All right, so the same thing with this celery here. I love celery, it's such a great, savory flavor. It goes so nicely with all of the flavors that we're using in this dish. And I'm just going to give this a nice dice. Again, same rocking motion. This is kind of what it looks like in slow motion. Okay, so take your time if you need to. All right. So then I'm going to just throw all of this into the same bowl. Because again, when our sausage is done, we're going to put it on this plate here and then add all of this to the pan. 
So what I like to do with my celery, I just take my the tip of my knife and run it down the center. So I get kind of smaller pieces because sometimes if you have a really big piece of celery, um, then you'll have have really really big pieces. So that just saves you from chopping it. Michael says I think Emily should get the tickets. Oh. Are you a Lion Lion fan? Um, I mean, a little bit. I, I didn't go. Fan? I'm sort of a football fan. I'm more of a hockey fan. For the tailgating food part. Right? There you go. The food part I'll do. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Melanie actually has a really good question. How do you tell if squash is ripe or good? Oh, that's a wonderful question. So with squash, um, very much similar to melon, you want the squash to be heavy for its size. Okay, so if you pick one up and it feels really, really light, that's not a good sign. You want it to feel very heavy. You want it to be very firm. You want the... Um, the stalk and the top to be nice and firm, so you don't want to see any mold or um, soft spots or anything like that. So that's a really good way to buy a good squash. Great question. Rachel has another one, which I think we covered with a video. How do you stop crying when you cut onions? Uh -huh. So there is a video right now on the Harvest Market Facebook page, but go ahead and explain a little bit in short fashion. So um, actually, I did some research on this, and if you wear contacts, that's the best way to help you not cry um, from onions. So contacts and goggles. So putting on like swimming goggles or um, any kind of like, I don't know, science classroom goggles if you have those lying around in your kitchen. Um, and also lighting a candle near where you're cooking also helps. So those are the three top things that you can do um, to stop crying from onion cutting. Uh, Sandy says, "Go Cubs, go!" Go Cubs, go! Uh, the Cubs right. are fighting for their lives right now, so they need all the love they can get. I am a big Cubs fan, so I I like that comment. <laughs> all right, but I'm just gonna get my onion started here. We are pretty good to go, you guys, in this pan. Um, so I try to heat down a little bit because we are cooking away, and my sausage is done. So how do I tell it's done? I don't see any more of that pink, okay? So it's all, it looks all nice and cooked through. Oh, gosh. So let me show you my magic onion cutting trick. Um, some of you guys I know have seen this before, or maybe you have your own trick that you do at home to dice an onion. So what I like to do is cut it this way first. Okay, just little slices, not all the way through. And then follow the grooves in the onion. Just take the tip of my knife. And again, I'm not going all the way through, I'm leaving it here so that it stays together. Turn it, and then dice down, and you've got those beautiful dices of onion. And I'm gonna give it a nice chop. It looks great. I think our sausage is done, you guys. So I'm gonna transfer it to my plate. Okay. Beautiful, making a mess, as I always tend to do in the kitchen. I am a messy cook. Oops, okay. Back on here, I'm gonna add a little oil to my pan. For our veggies. Strike right. says she'll forgive your sports allegiances. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so I'm gonna put this back in here, and I'm gonna use a new spoon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Looking really good. So I want to give this a pinch of salt and pepper in here. So again, this is my celery, my leek, and my onion in here. So we're going to get this sauteed. So just a pinch of salt and pepper each. If you want to win the Illini football tickets November 25th game, just leave a comment. You can ask a question during this live cooking class. Give us a suggestion for the next cooking class. Or simply just telling me how good she's doing. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right, I got the other half of my onion. Again, same way, I'm just gonna slice it um, horizontally and then vertically, just a little like here. Turn it and then dice. Beautiful. So now that we have this going in our pan, I want to get the next set of my 
produce chopped and ready to go. So looking at the recipe, the next thing that we have are the garlic and the apple. So I'm going to get those prepped while this sauteed in the pan gets nice and brown, cooked down a little bit. Gorgeous. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do my garlic first. So I've got two garlic cloves here. So I'm just going to take the big part of my knife and I'm going to lay it flat here and then smash it. Okay. And then that helps you peel your garlic. Now, if you have a fancy schmancy garlic press that you want to use at home, you certainly can. Whatever you feel comfortable with. This is the way that I like to smash my garlic. It's fun. Lori says, just joining. Love these classes. Oh, thanks, Lori. Tanika says, cooking with Emily at Harvest Market is the best cooking show out there. Oh, thank you. Uh, Rachel says, I love watching. And Samantha says, love this. Hi, Emily. Hi, Sam. So to recap what we got already, we browned the sausage. Yes, so our sausage is cooked, okay? And now we have our onion, our leek, and our celery sauteing in the pan with a little pinch of salt and pepper. So this is going, I did add a little drizzle of olive oil to the pan to help those veggies saute. So the next thing that I'm prepping for that we're going to add into the pan, so I just minced up my fresh garlic. Again, you can use pre-minced garlic, um, you can use a garlic press, totally fine. And now I'm going to dice up my apple. So I love Granny Smith apples. I know I'm crazy, they're super, super tart, but I love that flavor. I love the sourness of it. It is slightly sweet, not as sweet as your honey crisp, but it has a sweetness and I really like the flavors of the sweetness of the squash and the savoriness from all of our herbs and our turkey sausage. It just goes really well. Plus, Granny Smith is a nice firm apple, so it'll really hold up in this and it won't break apart and get mushy on us, okay? So give that a nice toss in your pan so everything should be browning nicely. It looks great. So how I'm going to do this, I always like a flat working surface. So I'm just going to cut off just a little bit of the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of take nice big slices like this, going around the core, okay? Again, if you have a, a fancy apple slicer at home that you want to use, you can use that for sure. So then I'm just left with the core here. You can really kind of go around it to get, get as much meat off of that core as you want. So then I have all of these little slices, so I'll just kind of stack them up nicely like this. And I'll slice them long ways, and then I'll turn them and slice them this way. Okay, so then that allows me to get a nice little diced apple. Because remember, I kind of want everything to be sort of the same size. So it all cooks nicely, and then when you bite into that eggplant squash, you get a little taste of everything. That's, that's the best part. All right, so again, I'm just going to be careful here. So slice them in little um, pieces one way and then cut them up the other. Beautiful. I hope your kitchen smells as good as mine. Ashley says, great job, Elena has a little apple emoji on there. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Oh, this apple smells so good. It's going to go so great. I love when we can incorporate fruit into savory dishes, especially apples, especially in the fall. Um, utilizing that fresh produce like we are in this recipe. I mean, this recipe to me just screams fall with our squash and our apples. It is savory. It's slightly sweet. It is warm and comforting. Oh, the best thing to have on a nice fall evening. Okay. Looking good, looking good. I'm going to give this a toss. Okay, guys, I am ready to now add my apple and my garlic. So this is going right in the pan. Okay, got my garlic there and my apple here. Does anybody cook with apples in savory dishes? If so, I'd like to hear what you make. Um, I'm always looking for new ideas for... Again, cooking with fruit and more savory dishes. 
it seems easy to get fruit in um, dessert form, but not always in, in savory cooking. So if you have a good recipe, I'd love to hear from you. All right, so mix that all in. Give it a nice toss. We're pretty much on like medium heat right now. Not super, super high. We've got some tender stuff in here, so we can we can stand to do it just a medium heat. I've got a slight saute going on. I can hear it kind of sizzling at the bottom of my pan. Um, it's not screaming at me, so that's what I want. Jackie says, I can't wait to see this put together. Yeah. It smells gosh. good here, that's for sure. It does. It's so beautiful. And that's the other thing I like, you guys, about using squash. Um, or really any other vegetable that you stuff is not only is it delicious and you're getting a serving of veggies, but it's beautiful. The presentation is just gorgeous. So this is something that's nice to serve if you have guests. Um, and again, the filling can be made beforehand. So if you do have guests coming and you want to impress them with this dish, you certainly can. All right, giving this a good stir. Again, since we added more to the pan, I like to season little bits at a time throughout the process. That way the flavor just kind of infuses in there. So again, just a little pinch, salt and pepper. Um, we have our spices coming in a little bit later, um, pretty soon actually. So if you take a look at the recipe, the spices that we're gonna be using, um, there's some cayenne pepper, just a pinch if you like heat. If you don't like heat, you can certainly leave that out. There's some um, onion powder, garlic powder, um, just a pinch of nutmeg in there. Um, and so I have all of my spices already pre-measured in here. So if you don't have them pre-measured like this, then get your spices together right now um, while the apples and the garlic sautés for just a minute or so more. Yeah, Yeshua says this looks great. Yeah. Jackie says the only thing I cook with apples is desserts. <laughs> well, now you can try this and be blown away at how amazing apples are in savory dishes. So, but if you want your chance to win online, I check this is the November 25th game. You got a set of four and a set of two. All you got to do is leave a comment on this live broadcast, ask a question, tell Emily how good she's doing, or give us a suggestion for next time. But Emily's question today is, how do you cook with apples? How do you cook with apples in savory dishes? Uh, Donna says, can you make it and freeze for later? Absolutely, absolutely. I would um, probably maybe not add the last um, ingredients of like the cheese and the breadcrumb. So if you went to just through maybe this um, and the spices, and then when you go to reheat it, go ahead and add the breadcrumb and the lemon juice then. Um, so I would freeze kind of at this point right here. Good question. Uh, Michael says, would cinnamon go well in this dish? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm doing just a tiny little pinch of, nut of nutmeg, um, but it's mainly savory, but a little bit of, a little pinch of cinnamon or a little pinch of allspice even mm -hmm. would work really well in this dish. All right, so I'm gonna add my spices, you guys. So go ahead and add um, your nutmeg, your garlic powder, your onion powder, and cayenne if you're using it. You can also use something like paprika um, or chipotle powder if you have something like that, or even like red pepper flakes, um, something if you want just a little, just a little bit of heat, nothing too crazy. Jamie says, cooking along with you in my kitchen smells amazing. Oh, wonderful. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. You can smell the apple. You can smell the leeks and the onion and the celery. I love the smell of the celery in this. It just, oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. Okay. Perfect. That's going great. So then we have our next set of ingredients that we're going to add to our pan. So I've got it right over here. Okay. So we have our sage, our parsley, and our lemon. So in the recipe, you can use dried herbs for sure. Um, I'm partial to using fresh just because I think the flavor is really, really wonderful of fresh herbs. But of course, if you don't have sage, but you have a bunch of dried sage in your pantry, feel free to use that. Just know that dried herbs are typically more concentrated in flavor than fresh. 
so you need a little bit less. So I'm going to use about this much of um, fresh sage. So these are pretty tiny leaves. So this is probably about five or six leaves of sage. Oh, it smells so good. The smell is so savory, slightly sweet. So I'm going to slice these up, just run my knife, give them a good chop. Nice and small so they can be um, dispersed evenly throughout the dish. Okay, add that right into the pan. There goes the sage. Okay, I'm just gonna bunch up, this is my parsley. Okay, I'm gonna bunch up my parsley like this into a big ball. And then I'm just gonna run my knife through it and give it a nice big chop. The parsley is not as potent as some other fresh herbs like rosemary and sage. So I like to typically use a little bit more parsley um, than I would like my sage in here. Rough chop, right in, beautiful. Give it a toss. If your pan is looking a little dry right here, add a little bit of olive oil or cooking spray. Oh my gosh, does that smell like heavenly? Okay, so now my um, lemon. So I'm just going to give my lemon a roll to get those juices flowing. And what I like to do, you guys, I actually like to cut my lemons and limes up in threes because I can get more juice out of them that way. So what I do is I cut it down this way. Okay, flip it over. And then I cut it down this way. Okay, so I actually have three pieces. And that allows me two to get my hand around it because sometimes I can't get my hand around a big half wedge of a lemon. Um, so this way I can fit nicely in the palm of my hand and I can squeeze it right in, okay? Steph says cheese, this is my favorite step. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> All right, right in the hand. So I think that's good. I feel good with that amount of lemon juice. I don't want it to be too overpowering. I just kind of want the lemon to add a little brightness and acidity to the dish. Um, so really about half a lemon, is that right? About half a lemon, yeah. Thank you. All right. So I'm really gonna turn down my feet right here because everything is cooked, okay? Um, and now we're just adding the final touches. So the last thing that we have, we've got the breadcrumbs. So these are just plain, I'm using panko. Um, I like the, kind of the coarser um, consistency of the panko. You can use regular breadcrumbs if you want to. If you have Italian seasoned flavor, you can use that as well. Okay, so right in here. Okay. Now the cheese. So I've just got some Parmesan cheese here. I'm gonna put this in, and I'm gonna save some because I wanna put some on top of our um, squashes when we, after we stuff them, okay? So give this your, if you wanna add more cheese, you can. You're the chef in your own kitchen, so if you want to add more cheese, please feel free. Never a bad time for cheese. Never a bad time for cheese. Okay, you guys. Oh my gosh, I can smell that lemon juice and the Parmesan cheese. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, I'm going to add back in my sausage right in the pan. Give it a toss. Look at this filling, you guys. The cheese is melting. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay, this looks great. Hey, guess what? The filling is done. How easy was that? I love when you can kind of um, create a dish and just build it in layers into one pan and then you're done before you know it. All right, so I'm bringing over my squash. So with your squash, so some of these um, are really nice because they have a nice big um, cavity in here that we can fill. If you have a squash that has a lot of meat on the inside, meaning that that, um, that hole in there isn't too big and, and you want to put more filling in there, simply take a spoon and just scoop some of that filling out. Um, not all of it because that's the good part. You want to get some of that squash in there. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take this guy and you do want your oven to be on you guys because you are going to stick these in the oven um, for just a few minutes. You can even stick them under the broiler if you want to, because really what we're going to be doing is just melting the cheese on top and heating through the acorn squash um, if you if you haven't just taken them out of the oven. So uh, these guys are cool. Um, so that's really all we're doing, but make, make sure that your oven is on and it's heated 
and ready to go. Lena says, this looks great, so get ready to eat. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so now I'm just gonna scoop, scoop the filling right in. Oh my gosh, does this smell so, so good, you guys. Look at that. And typically you will have more filling, um, which is okay because it's great leftovers. Um, you can eat it just on its own. If you have extra, just serve some on the side and there you go. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna load these suckers up. Just pat it down a little bit with your spoon. All right, look at these. Mm, so good, so I'm gonna take the rest of my cheese and then just give each a good sprinkle. Look at that. Oh my goodness, how beautiful. So then you guys are gonna pop these guys into the oven. So your oven should be, again, you can put this on the broiler setting, but just keep an eye on it because it'll cook fast. You just wanna melt that cheese on top and heat it through, or you can preheat your oven to like 425 or 450 and just stick it in there for a few minutes to get all heated through. And then you guys are ready to eat. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you say you can do with the leftovers again? It's like, okay to freeze, correct? Absolutely. So this will freeze for sure. Um, if you are making a bunch of this, I would probably recommend not adding um, the breadcrumb just because it might get a little bit soggy. Um, so if you were to freeze this, you could go all the way through the um, adding the spices. And then I would stop there and let it cool. Um, you want to cool it to about room temp and then put it in the fridge um, and then stick it in the freezer. Um, and then when you're ready to reheat, you simply add the rest of the ingredients. So the breadcrumbs and the lemon juice um, and the fresh herbs and things like that. If you wanted to go um, non-meat, if you want to go vegetarian, Easy. Uh, leave out the sausage or is there leave a out the sausage, yeah. So, Substituting meat is super, super easy. If you don't do sausage, no big deal whatsoever. You can definitely do mushrooms, um, which have a beautiful meaty texture and a dark earthy flavor. Um, you can do eggplant even, I've done. Um, or you can do a meat substitute. So there are like the soy sausages um, that you could, if you have a favorite of those, you can use that. Um, so there's lots of different ways you can do that. And you can easily make this gluten-free um, if you simply use a gluten-free breadcrumb. So I know that in our store we carry the brand Ian's, um, and that's a popular gluten-free brand. Um, they have the breadcrumbs, so that's an easy fix as well. Did we made it through all the questions. Again, all the people who left a comment during broadcast and are doing the line of tickets for November 25th game, uh, please leave us comments on what you'd like to see next on the Cooking with Emily class. Yes. You got any hints on what the next one could be? So coming into the holiday season, um, we might be doing something a little bit holiday themed um, to get ready for your parties. And um, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. <laughs> After this broadcast, if they didn't catch all the video, they wanna make it step by step with text, they can find it on the website, right? Absolutely, they can find it on the website and it will be posted on YouTube as well. So if you didn't catch this whole thing or you wanna make this at a later time, I'll still be up there for you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope you enjoyed this broadcast. And I hope you enjoyed your, will enjoy your sausage and apple stuffed acorn squash. Thank you so much.